Hello, Kathy. Hi, Nicola. How are you? I'm doing good. It's late in the day for you. Yes, um, it's coming up to 11 o'clock. And um, I've been at my desk a lot today. I am proofing booklets from the printers. So, oh, wow. I know. I've done five booklets on the trot. And um, each booklet I do, I feel as if it's like giving birth. <laughs> So well, I'm, given the amount that you write in them, yeah, I think that's the okay. case. So I feel exhausted at the moment. <laughs> but yeah. The booklets have come from the printers, or the proofs have come from the printers, so I've been going through them uh, tonight very carefully. So fingers crossed <laughs> they're going to be right oh, by the good. time they're published. So um, I'm not releasing five charts. I'm releasing two charts at the end of August and some more in um end of September time, October time, but because I'm going traveling for a little while now, um, now's my time for doing it. <laughs> wow. I know, I know. So, anyway. Well, yeah, I was going to say, if you're off on the road a lot, that definitely alters how much time you have to do editing. That's right. Well, I'm hoping to get lots of stitching. You can do lots of stitching. I know, that's what I'm editing. hoping for. So um, I've got lots of stitching to do. Um, there we are. And for me, traveling is a great opportunity to stitch without any interruptions. So, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There we are. Okay. Um, the last video we did, um, so many people appreciated the information and knowledge that you shared. That, um, you know, it'd be great if you could share some more of your wonderful knowledge about silks this time. Okay. All right, so um, you know well, what I, I know that you like. I know you like to stitch with silk. It's with the, my preferred thread as well. Um, yes. The thread I stitch with the most is Soie d'Alger, mm -hmm. um, just because yeah. I love the color range. I love the mm -hmm. the texture of it. I'm gonna turn this just a tiny bit, and you can see the uh, the wall behind me. That's all of the Soie d'Alger hanging. Yeah, it makes me feel all funny looking at that. <laughs> I want yeah. to reach out well, and stroke you know, sometimes, sometimes it's fun to just kind of go and stand in front of the wall and 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 enjoy the colors. Mm -hmm. We do that actually quite a bit because we do color matching for people. Yes. So um, somebody who wants to convert from another thread to Soie d'Alger will actually pull the thread, go stand in front of that wall and go, mm, I think that one's the best one. <laughs> yeah. It works out pretty well, and we like it because it's just a, it's a lovely thread, and mm -hmm. it's um, relatively easy for us to get. Yes. We yeah. order from Access, who's the distributor for Averisois in the U.S. Mm -hmm. We order from them every weekend. Yes. Um, and so every week we get a box that's got, you know, hoops, silk threads, um, yeah. lovely fabrics, all sorts of accoutrements. Yes. So, yeah. We, we like that it's a, it's a lovely thread, and it's easy to get. That's right. I love but, So I did... Go ahead. I love working with the Dalger. Um, not only do I love stitching with it, I really enjoy reproducing with it because there are just so many colors. I think there's, is there 640 odd colors? It's something like that. It's a lot. Um, yeah, I've lost track. Yeah. When I first, um, many, many years ago, before I was reproducing them, I had a DMC shade card opening up thinking, my gosh, there's so many colors. Yet when you sit down to reproduce with DMC, you realize that there are not that many colors. Um, with the Dalger, the finest, it's such a fine amount of difference between them that you can really sort of pull out the nuances of the colors in reproduction samplers. Um, I love working with them. I really, really do. Uh, but then of course, when you, our charts well are... I think some of that is just the fact that that the color palettes you know change over time for some of the companies yeah um, in DMC's case I think DMC's not really after sort of the and I don't and I'm not saying that Everest Wide directly is after the reproduction sampler market because their market's much bigger than that but I think their mm -hmm. colors tend to be more in that range where mm -hmm. you don't find quite the same range in the DMC. Mm -hmm. Every every company is a bit different. That's right. Um, yeah. You know, I know that Namora at the moment has, has just brought out three 
new colours in the Dalje range that are specifically um, colours that I find a lot when I'm reproducing. Um, she's yes. a very, very knowledgeable lady when it comes about colours and um, the history of colour and, and silk dyeing. Well, and I think um, with the vendors who pay attention to what's on the market um, and to support the products that they sell, mm -hmm. that they pay attention to those things. And if there's a, a gap and they can fill that gap yeah. um, and the other end of the production happens, which is always the, the challenge, then, you know, yeah. that's a great thing when those when those planets align. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah. Anyway, so we sell a bunch of different kinds of silk um, all together in my shop. We carry about 140 different kinds of needlework threads, but that's in part because we sell for people who do cross stitch needlepoint and embroidery. Yeah. And the range, the range spans so much because depending on what technique you're doing might depend on which kind of thread you use. Mm -hmm. Some of the needlepoint threads are too thick and they're not really suitable for doing cross stitch with, but a number of the threads we use for cross stitch are quite suitable for needlepoint. In fact, mm -hmm. Soie d'Alger, all seven strands of Soie d'Alger, if you don't take them apart, um, is actually what you stitch with as tent stitch on 13 mesh canvas. Right. So that's really great because that gives the needlepointers a really great range without them having to deal with taking threads apart and putting them back together again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So I so I've got kind of a selection of things together to at least show you some samples of some yeah. of them and then talk about kind of what they're made out of. Great. So the the two types of silks are either made from filament or spun. And filament is you take the the little cocoon, you unravel it, and it's long filaments that the that the silkworms have actually extruded. Mm -hmm. The spun silks are made from the stuff that gets broken. So mm -hmm. if the cocoon's not intact, or in the process of unspooling it, they do you know there's some breakage, then they use those for the spun threads. The spun threads are more common than the filament ones. Yeah. And Swadelge is one of the spun ones. Um, it's a spun twisted mm -hmm. one. The only flat silks are usually made from filament because otherwise they don't really work very well. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to kind of go through and show you a bunch of different things. Um, and I'm going to start with something that you might not be familiar with. And I think a lot of cross stitchers aren't familiar with, which is Trebizond. Yeah. Trebizond is made for excess commodities. Um, and it's Cheer. a filament silk. Um, so it's a long strand, very yeah. shiny. You can, in theory, take it apart. Um, yes. I've done cross-stitch with it by taking it apart. It's mostly used for 18 mesh mono canvas for needlepoint. Yeah. But I thought, well, if I can do it with 18 mesh mono canvas, why can't I stitch cross-stitch with it? So I did. Yeah. So I can did this. Can you to your right? To your right. Uh, over and up. Up. Lovely, perfect. Okay, yes. there we go. Absolutely perfect. I actually have a tiny picture in picture on my camera, so if I pay attention to it, I can actually see what you see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is 20 count wedding bonnet. Yes. Um, it's a fabric that Access Commodities brings in and sells under the legacy name. Yes. It's a really lovely, medium, slightly heavyweight um, linen. Yeah. Um, really nice and smooth. And it works great if you use Trebizond, the way it comes off the spool. So this is like about the equivalent of about yeah. five or about five strands of floss. Yeah, I have actually and, used um, that, Kathy. And it works really wonderfully because you get this really nice, um, smooth, yeah. slightly shiny um, design. And for somebody who wants to do sampler motifs, um, or a really big sampler even, yeah. um, you could do it on a 20 count linen um, over one or over two and use a really lovely thread, which not a lot of people think about. It's basically about the equivalent of a DMC Pearl 5, but because it's from filament silk, it's much shinier and much softer. And so you get this really lovely sheen to your design that you yeah. don't get with pearl cotton. Yeah. Thea Duke from Victoria Sampler, she uses it a lot in her designs. So um, I before I sort of started it seriously with reproduction samplers, I stitched an awful lot of Thea's work. So I'm very familiar with that. It's a beautiful um, 
thread to use. Very, very nice. Yeah, it is. It's very, very nice. It's really lovely. Mm -hmm. It doesn't come in the color range that something like Soie d'Alger does, mm -hmm. but it does mm -hmm. come in a pretty wide range of colors. Yeah. So for somebody who's interested in doing silk, but doesn't want to stitch on a fine count linen, there are certainly options out there. Mm -hmm. So they're not stuck with feeling like, well, I'm left out because I don't want to stitch on 40 count. Yeah. There's certainly plenty of options. Yeah. So the next one I would suggest then for somebody who might want to do um, something not quite that thick is Soie Perle. Yeah. So Soie Perle is another Avera Soie thread. Mm -hmm. um, it um, is you need also, to go, Kathy, um, from it, you need yeah. to go to your right side. It's difficult. It we're, we're sharing a split screen. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, see. it's always the challenge of the the delay in the screen too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a beautiful sheen. And so, and Swap Relay is also made from a spun silk. So it's shiny like mm -hmm. the Swaggle Blend, like the, the, the Trebizond, and then a yeah. couple of the other ones are as yeah. well. And this is about the equivalent of about two and a half strands of DMC or Swa Dolge. Right. So if you wanted to do it on um, a 28 count or a 25 count, mm -hmm. So if you wanted to work over two on a 25 count linen, this would be a perfect thread for doing that because you could do it with one, one strand of it mm -hmm. coming off the, the, off the spool yeah. and not have to use a bunch of plies of threads, which mm -hmm. I think is always a nice feature. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And then the other one that's a, that's a spun one, uh, or sorry, that's a filament one is a Swa Oval. So Swa Oval is also a filament silk but this is a flat silk yeah and flat means it's not twisted at all mm -hmm. so when you un when you take it off the spool and kind of you know the thing i notice about the ones that are made from filament is that yeah. they will tend to retain this sort of curled shape yes. from the spool that yeah. you don't usually see with the spun ones and i'm assuming that's because you've got really long fibers and they have memory yeah um, it's used a lot for Japanese and Chinese embroidery, um, as well as a few others, but primarily those. Mm -hmm. So it's a really nice one to work with. And then um, the other one that's also made out of uh, spun, or sorry, out of filament, is Soie de Paris. Oh, now this. And Soie de Paris yeah. is a six ply. <clears throat> this. So when this you is a six it, ply. There. Yeah. Yeah. So there's that. When you feel this, it is just absolutely divine, the silk. I, I, I hear what you're saying. I don't think that there are... Well, I think any time you stitch with... Um, uh, so I usually tell people, it's like a really good quality silk or even cotton is going to have a nice hand to it when you oh, work yeah. with it. It's yeah. not going to feel rough. It's not going to feel bumpy, no. unless, of course, it's intended to be that way. Because mm -hmm. um, there are some threads made to be crinkly, but you want something that's smooth. The filament ones are smoother than the spun ones just because they're made from long fibers. Mm -hmm. Kind of like we talk about Egyptian cotton versus other kinds of yeah. cotton. In theory, the, the Egyptian cotton has longer fibers in it, and so that makes it a bit smoother as well. Yeah. But Soie de Paris is really nice because you get... Um, you get the sheen of the filament, but you get the weight of a strand of um, Soie d'Alger. It's not quite the same. It's maybe about 10% thinner than a strand of Soie d'Alger is. Right. Um, doesn't have the same color range because there's not as many colors in it, but it's a really nice thread to add. Mm -hmm. If you want to add a little, I'm going to say sparkle, but not in the metallic sense, yeah. more in the shiny sense to your project, you could do... You know, for example, you could do a tree and do the body of the tree. And then if there were flowers on the tree, do the flowers in yeah. something like a flat silk, mm -hmm. or like a filament silk and have it be a little bit shiny. And those little touches and make a, a difference. One. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I, I mix in, I, I mix threads in my projects quite frequently because sometimes I'm after a different texture. Yes. So I might mix Swa Delche with Swa 100 or Swa Glossophene or even Swa Perlay or Swa de Puri because I want it to be a little bit different, not hugely, but a little bit mm -hmm. so that I, I can get something more of a depth of field in my project. Yeah. than having it all be flat in one plane. Mm -hmm. This is really more true for people who do needlepoint. Because a lot of people who do needlepoint, they might stitch on a canvas with 20 or 30 different kinds of threads because yeah. they're yeah. after all of those textural differences. Mm -hmm. We don't yeah. tend to do that as much for cross stitch, but we do some. So, yeah. but it's a fun one. And then um, in the rest of, and then in the Avera Swa, so the other filament one is Swago Blends. Yes. So Swago Blends, is just slightly heavier than Swa Dolce. So if you wanted to mix weights a little, you could do Swa de Paris, Swa Dolce, and then Swa Go Blends, and mm -hmm. you'd have a little bit of textural difference as well as a little bit of weight difference. And again, this is a nice shiny, a nice smooth thread. It, yeah. You know, you run your finger down it, and it just feels really lovely. Yeah. Um, and it's got a bit of a sheen to it that you normally get out of, things like the filament silks because mm, that's just yeah. kind of the nature of them. So it's a really nice thread to work with. And it does come in some really lovely colors. It does. It does. And then the other, and then the ones after that, that I tend to work with, in fact, these are the two I work with a lot are um, SWA 100 yeah. and SWA Surfine. Mm -hmm. And I know you've been using SWA 100. And I love uh, it as well. It's, it's a lovely thread. It is. It's um. It's a spun silk as opposed mm -hmm. to filament. Um, and it's twisted like a buttonhole twist. So if you've ever looked at the thread that they stitch buttonholes with, you'll see how tightly, it's very rounded, it's very tightly twisted. Yeah. Um, that's what this is, that's what both of these are made like. And um, the thing that's nice about that is it means that they don't untwist. I know, it's uh, such a hardy silk. I, yeah, I've just been really surprised about how robust it is to, when you work with it. It is, mm -hmm. it is. And in fact, actually, um, you can use it for machine embroidery and machine quilting. Mm -hmm. uh, Lamora at Access has a number of quilt shops that buy it for doing uh, machine quilting with you know they're doing deck they're doing designs through the quilt mm -hmm. on, on machine yeah and mm -hmm. they're doing it with the swa 100 because mm -hmm. it's got a great color range and there aren't a lot of embroidery machine threads that are in the silk range that are this caliber or this sturdy yeah um and you'll notice in the spools i've been opening so access if you buy thread from a vera swa in france they will come packaged different. Um, oh, usually they yeah. put them on wood spools. Yes. Um, yeah. But Access gets them, Access buys big cones. Yeah. You know, they're like 1,000, you know, 1,500. They're, they're really big, huge amounts of them. I've been to the warehouse and seen them, and they're just amazing. Um, and they spool them in the States themselves. So they use these plastic spools yeah. that have... Um, a ridge on the top and the bottom of them. And what you do is, so what, how I do this is I take my thumb and run it around the rim. I don't, if you don't pull it too hard, you'll actually pop the top right. off. And then that will let you access the thread right. yeah. when I'm ready to cut it. Usually before I cut it, I will wrap it twice um, and then lock it back in place and now it won't come undone. So now I can actually hold the spool. Yeah from the thing before I cut it off, which is really handy. You could infer, you know, make a pretty decoration and hang them all on the wall this way. It'd be kind of pretty. <laughs> <laughs> but I really like it because I like doing a lot of over one work. Mm -hmm. um, so on um, a lot of the linen, like 36 count linen, I can do over one work with the SWA 100. Yeah. On the 40 count, I do over one work with SWA Surfine. Yes. So Swasserfine is slightly thinner. So 103 means it's a 100 denier made out of three strands that are twisted together. Yes. And denier is an industry standard that tells you how thick, what the diameter of the thread is. So a lot of the vendors that you see, say machine embroidery thread, 
it will say, you know, it's an 80, it's a 100. Katona is a, is a fairly common cotton brand in the machine embroidery market, and it's an 80 weight. And that has to do with how round it is um, and how round the diameter is. So Swa 100 is a 100 denier made from three ply. Swa Surfine is a 130 denier made from two, made from two ply. And um, twisted the same as the SWA 100 is. So a buttonhole twist really tight. Um, same thing. It'll come off the spool the same way. And um, the thing I really like about it is because it is 30% thinner, mm -hmm. um, I can do um, over one work full cross stitch on 40 count linen and get absolutely great coverage. because it, it stays in place. It doesn't move. It's really wonderful. It's so crisp. When I was at your Bathia class, we yes. talked about the, um, the freehand button sole stitch. Yes. And I like to do mine with a, a twisted yeah. thread like this. Mm -hmm. So I do my detached buttonhole stitches mm -hmm. with either SWA 100 or SWA Surfine, depending yeah, on yeah. how thick I want it to be. And the definition because was then, really beautiful. Because then I can get a really smooth, yeah. nice, like really crisp look. Yeah. And the definition on the detached buttonhole stitch, when you stitch it with the 103 or the Surfine, well, it's yeah, just it's beautiful. Yeah. It really, yeah. really is. Yeah. yeah. It's a really, it's a really lovely thread to work with. It comes yeah. in a lot of really great colors. Yeah. Um, Lamora is bringing in more of the Swasser Fien. Um, mm -hmm. she actually brought it in for, um, a bunch of us about, I guess it's been about five or maybe six or eight years ago now, because mm -hmm. we were looking for a really thin thread, uh, to be able to do, you know, like 45 yeah. count linen with yeah. and doing it with some of the other threads just didn't work very well. Yeah. So for a while, Anna Gloriana died. Um, she did a special thing for us. We did a, a thing called Society of Swa mm -hmm. Um And then from that, she discovered that as much as she loved, as we all loved the thread, dyeing a single ply twisted thread like that is just really hard. Mm -hmm. So what we did was um, we went and did, um, she went and found um, a, a silk that was a similar weight. So Tudor silk which I'm sure a lot of people have heard of. Yes. Um, this is a 12 strand mm -hmm. silk, but it's half, it's individual threads are half the weight of a normal strand of silk. So about the same weight as Swasser Fiend. So yeah. if you pair the Tudor silk and the Swasser Fiend together, yes. you get a really great color range. You get some really lovely hand dyes and you get really lovely solids. So yeah. it gives you a really nice color palette to play yeah. with. I'm looking forward. I'll be at Jean's now for summer school. Well, we'll be in the same session, won't we? Yes, and, actually, I'm um, planning to. I'm looking forward to sitting down in the store and pulling the colors for the band sampler that I'm teaching for Jean in 2020. Um, oh, yes. Yeah. And that's I, a lovely sample. Oh, it's beautiful. And I think yeah. that, you know, if I can get the colors I need in the Sophine range, you know, it's just going to be so, so beautiful. Yeah. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, because there isn't a shade card, um, I need to. No, and there isn't really one for the SWA 100 no. either. But, no. you, you know, at least if you can start from the SWA Del Jay, we can, we can usually tell whether or not there is something close to yes. it. Yes. And, yeah. and Jean would have that That's would have that, have that yeah. as well. Yeah. Yes. Again, yeah. it's sort of part of the, what we end up doing when we're trying to match threads between either different weights or different companies or different types of thread. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. just, you know, what's kind of close to that. Do you know, it's so exciting that we live at the time that we do because we're starting to get some really beautiful, beautiful linens through. And we've got the silks to be able to stitch on these linens. It's just... It's exciting, very exciting. Time. It is, it is. Yeah. Well, and things like the discussions we've been having the last couple of weeks with Zweigart yes. about the dense count, the 46 yeah. and the, the Bergen and the, and the Kingston, you know, those were linens that they never really thought of as being for counted work, mm. at least the kind of counted work that we, we do. do. Yes. And now that there's threads to support that, now they understand why it is we're looking for more even weaves as opposed to the uneven weaves. Yes. Yeah. But even if it's on any even weave, being able to stitch with 
Tudor silk or swasserfine on a 5260 is a really nice thing. Yeah. Um, I thought it was really good as Weigart to listen to us and to, yes. you know, accommodate yes. our requests that we want even weave in the higher counts. It'd be yeah. um, great to see the linen when it starts to come through. Well, I think they recognize that the American market is, in fact, different. Yes. Um, that Because part of the discussion was uh, they weren't really quite clear on the counted type of counted work we were doing them. Yes. So I sent them a photograph of Lucy Navier. Yes. And then also sent them to your YouTube channel and to the blog and to your, your website and said, this is what we're trying to yes. do with this. Yeah. We're not doing little motifs. Yeah. that are going to get scattered somewhere. We're doing big Herkin samplers with like this. Yeah. Um, and they, they're, and I think that opened their eyes to, oh, now yeah. we understand what yeah. you wanted to do. Well, I had a very yeah. interesting discussion with the representative from Zweigart at Nashville. You know, she came into the back room and I took Lucy out and I was showing her. Um, but I'm not quite sure how much she understood of me. <laughs> But um, well, I think I think they get I think she gets it more now. I think the right. production people even get it more now. It's yes. like, OK, there is a reason why we're after this. Mm. And 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 if you can. And since the hand dyers are interested in dyeing both of them. Yes. Yeah. Then that also means that rather than they do one mill run and it takes them three years to sell it out. You know, they might do one mill run just for one of the hand dyeing companies. Yeah, yeah. Because sometimes they'll buy an entire mill run because they have enough orders to support mm -hmm. that. So, yeah. And a mill run is about 400 meters. So that's a lot of fabric. Yeah, that's a lot of samplers. Yeah. <laughs> we'll all be busy yeah, stitching. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I do think it's lovely that we have so many different options to stitch with Absolutely. now. Because when I started stitching, I mean, I started stitching when I was about six. Um, uh, I'm, I will be 64 this year. So that was a while ago. Okay. Um, and I, the only thing I ever saw was cotton floss in the five and nine store, you know, mm -hmm. and I stitched on, um, you know, printed embroidery. I didn't know anything about counted work. I didn't yeah. discover counted cross stitch until I was in my twenties. Uh, and, and I think now you come into this and there's just so many lovely fabrics, so many lovely threads. Mm -hmm. When I started the shop 21 years ago, there were not this many, silk threads on the market mm -hmm. there were mm -hmm. i mean avera swaz obviously been around for eons um along with a few of the other companies but um uh, there weren't very many people hand dyeing yeah there weren't many people doing other kinds of of silk threads so we live as you said kind of in a golden age yeah. of supplies both for designs and fabric and um linen and fabric as in linens and in threads, whether you're stitching on 20 count or whether you're stitching on, you know, 56 right. count. The yeah. little girls who stitch these samplers in the 16, 17 and 1800s, they didn't have this choice. No, they would have just stitched yeah. on whatever they could get. get. And depending yeah. on where they lived and their income level would have had a lot to do with mm -hmm how what the density was what the color was what the texture was yeah, yeah i mean I, I look at many of those samplers and i think my yeah uh, how did they stitch that you know i know you said one of the ones you that you've got that you've been reproducing it looks like it was done in something like 60 or 80 count well, no, Harry, like, uh, uh, even even with yeah. even with magnifiers i'm not sure i can do 80 60 yeah. i can do but i yeah. can't not sure about 80. well harriet salt was stitched on equivalent to 80 count and and claudia yeah. from dutch treat designs you know she believes that it was you know the remnants of a bed sheet um oh that could be that could yeah. be yeah. yeah i hadn't thought of that yeah well and two i think for a lot of those designs we assume they were counted, and they might not have been. I mean, parts of them might have been, but oh, parts yeah. of them might not have been. I'm doing a white work class with um, Trish Nguyen at the moment. Um, and um, one of the things she's trying to get everybody past is when they did white work samplers, they weren't looking at, you know, I, I need to make sure it's over this many threads. They were trying to, like, can I get it to fit in this space? Yes. Yeah. And do I go over three or five or whatever to do yeah. that? And I think for um, counted stitchers, getting us past that, as you said, in one of your videos, trying to get people to do it over three oh, yeah. um, can be a challenge. Yeah, it's yeah. so hard yeah. to go one, but two, three. It really is. That you can use as well. Yeah. 
Yeah. And um, when I'm sitting down and reproducing samplers, I'm always amazed the amount of samplers you actually see that they've drawn the, the vine around the border. Um, oh, okay. right, rather than counted it, and you can see the markings underneath. Um, you know, so that a lot of those little girls they weren't counting out the designs. Yeah, now, they didn't have the printing presses that would produce patterns that were counted. You know, they they had patterns that were drawn out, and they would um, prick and pounce them out, or their teacher would draw them on the fabric for them, and they would embroider over. It's so many times you see the ink marks underneath their stitches. Oh, yes. Yeah. So many times. Well, and I do wonder sometimes, too, whether or not um, that part of that was just that, that well, as you said, there wasn't really printing at that caliber at that yeah. point. Um, it wasn't that you couldn't have stuff printed, but there wasn't an audience for it because yeah. it was mostly done through schools. I mean, I, I'm assuming that for the most part, you don't really start to see printed stuff until maybe the Victorian time frame when you get things like the Berlin charts. Yes, yeah. Um, you know, they, a lot of these schools, they were charity schools. They were, you know, Sunday um, schools provided by the church. The income wasn't there to buy lots and lots of textbooks and patterns. You know, a teacher yeah. would have just drawn something on the fabric for these young girls on a lot of occasions. So, well, and they were learning they were learning the technique for a specific purpose as opposed to just make something pretty. Mm, yeah. You know, we tend to do it because it's appealing visually and we and aesthetically we, we think it's something we want to stitch as opposed to I need to learn how to do this to be able to repair my household linens or to mark yeah, my linens or right. yeah. you know, show that I'm proficient in these skills because I want to become a governess. That's right. Kind yeah. of thing. We yeah. it's a it's really a whole different sort of mentality of why we do it, yeah. which is which is interesting just to kind of think in those time in, in that time frame for them. Yeah, so. I think that's one of the things that really draws me to band samplers. That as you're sitting there and you're working a band, you're imagining why this little girl recorded this pattern. You can think, yes, that would work on a collar, that would work on a cuff. You could see this band on a cushion in their houses or you could see this oh, pattern yeah. on a bed hanging and you and you know you can understand why they were recording those patterns and why they needed to be reversible as well so uh, yeah so um back to the silk threads yes so some of the other um solid color ones are um Karen Collection um, sells uh, one called Swacker Stall yes um it's it's also a 12 strand mm -hmm. um and then they hand dye it and sell it um, um, as water lilies. That's the name of mm -hmm. their hand dyed one. So the water lilies is hand dyed Swacrisol. Yes. Um, and they do tend to have a lot of like this one is actually not really wild in terms of the color change. This one's got red and purple in it. Mm -hmm. They tend to have a lot more of the you'll get multiple colors as opposed to sort of tone on tone. Gloriana yeah. tends to have a bit more tone on tone colors. Mm -hmm. um, and then in the other solid ones, and these two are more common in probably needlepoint stores than encrusted shops, um, is um, Splendor yeah. Yeah. from Rainbow Gallery. It's mm -hmm. also a 12 strand. Um, it has a really nice color range, not as shiny or as smooth as Soie d'Alge. Mm -hmm. I think of Soie d'Alge as really the top tier of the stranded silks. Mm -hmm. um, it's just got the best colors and the best sheen, in my mm -hmm. particular opinion. Yeah. Um, and then another one is Needlepoint Inc. So Needlepoint Incorporated um, is actually um, in San Francisco. They're based mm -hmm. across the bay from me. They have mm -hmm. a retail store there as well as their wholesale company. Um, and this is an eight-strand Chinese silk. And all of the stranded ones, typically the single strand is about the same weight between all of them. Right. So whether it's um, Soie d'Alge, Needlepoint Inc., um, um, Soie Cristal, or any one of the others, the single strand is about the same. So if you're going by color, mm -hmm. I need 20 colors and I can't get them all in one range, then you can go between the, the vendors and usually come pretty close to finding colors that will work, right. which is nice. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. And then there's a couple of others that are also companies that people wouldn't necessarily know about for crossfit shops. The Pure Palette sells a thread called Baroque Silk. Mm-hmm. Um, this is made primarily for needlepoint. It is pliable, so you can take it apart. Um, I'm working on a carpet bag. Um, that it's a needlepoint piece, and the carpet bag is my arm. My hands aren't going to fit it. <laughs> it's about 24 inches across and about 18 inches tall, right. and I'm stitching the entire thing in baroque silk. Right. Um, it, I, I've got one. I've got one side of the first one, and I haven't finished the other side. It might happen in my lifetime. At least we're going to hope it happens in my <laughs> lifetime. <laughs> and then another, the stranded one. Um, is Planet Earth. And Planet Earth, um, in addition to doing um, a lot of really straightforward just needlepoint um, threads, yeah. does a six-ply one as well. Right. So if you're near a store and it's not a cross-stitch shop yes. and you think, well, but I only stitch on linen, I don't do any needlepoint, that doesn't mean you shouldn't go see them yeah. because they might have threads that you wouldn't necessarily see in a cross stitch only store. Yes. Um, and if you can check the weight, you might go, oh, I bet I can use this. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times I'll go into different stores just because I want to see if there's something that I can use that maybe I've not seen before. Yeah. I mean, even we carry about 140 threads, and even with that, we don't carry everything. Yes. So I always like to go shopping in other people's shops. Because I like to see, you know, what am I missing that maybe I might want to carry in the store or that I just want for my personal stash. You know, mm-hmm. I still do a lot of stash shopping for myself. <laughs> <laughs> Owning a shop does not negate personal stash. <laughs> <laughs> Although I do tell people that when I started the shop, my husband was hoping that I would start with my personal stash. And I disabused him of that notion really early on. <laughs> And then one of the other solid silks is um, Sajou, which is a French company um, that does a whole range of uh, machine and hand threads. They do a silk that's kind of a bit more like a soie perle. Um, Mm. It's a filament one, and uh, it's a really shiny one, but it's heavier. So it would be something you would use on like maybe a 25 count, but it's got a really nice sheen to it, which is lovely. Mm. And then in the hand dyes... So I mentioned the water lilies. Mm-hmm. Um, the one I'm sure most people are familiar with is Gloriana. Yes. So this is her 12 strand. Yes. So she started with the 12 strand silk. Mm-hmm. Um, Anne actually used to work for me about, I guess it's probably been close to 18 years ago now. And she started dyeing the thread. She'd been doing it for fun yes. while she was working for the shop. And we were like, you should start a business doing this. And, you know, now, now she, you know, 20, what, 20 years later, she can't keep up. She's just yeah. so popular. Yes. And the other thing that she dyes that I really love is Floramel yeah. is hand-dyed soie d'alge. So this is a seven strand soie d'alge, and but it's hand dyed. And if you um, compare, if you're in a shop that carries both, take two colors that take the same color in both of them, yeah. and look at them side by side. The floramel is always going to be um, more intense, more vibrant, and more shiny right. because of the fact that the soie d'alge is a much more shiny silk to start with. So you get a really great coverage. And most all of her, I think almost all of her colors are available um, in both Floramel and um, uh, and in the 12 strand. You would think I would know this because I'm actually her webmaster, but I don't remember. <laughs> I haven't looked at the list lately. <laughs> um, and then the other one a lot of people might find um, in their shop is Valsois mm-hmm. from yeah. uh, Classic Colorworks. It's yes. also a 12 strand. Um, uh, silk. So again, the same weight as the rest of them. Uh, the next 12 strand is um, Thread Gatherer's Silken Colors. Yes. Um, yes. Cece's been dyeing threads for a really long time and she's got some really lovely colors, but it's also a 12 strand. And then um, Dinky Dyes, uh, which was originally an Australian company, it's now in the States. Um, uh, it's an 8 strand. Uh, mm-hmm. All the color names are typically 
for names for things in Australia. So you get all sorts of strange names. Well, thank you. This, one is, <laughs> this one is Manganu, and I don't really know what Manganu is for Australia. I know what some of them are. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe somebody can leave a comment on the video explaining what it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here. And then uh, the other thread that I mentioned earlier that um, Anna Gloriana dies is, um, flor is um, a Tudor silk. Yes. So Tudor silk is her 12 strand, really fine. Yes. So if you read the label on it, um, and on my side, I'm looking at the label, it's a 120 slash two. Right. So again, it's a 120 denier made out of two strands. So this Tudor silk is between the weight of SWA 100 and the weight of SWA yes. So SWA 100 is 100 slash three. Tudor silk is one is 120 slash two. And um, Swazerfine is 130 slash two. Mm -hmm. So between those three, if you wanted to do something with slightly different weights, yeah. you've actually got room to do that. Yeah. And then we also sell this thread from uh, Painter Threads. She's actually a German um, lady who dyes um, mostly a pair of swa threads. Right. This is hand dyed swago blends. Right. So the really shiny filament silk, um, she gets kinds of it, hand dyes it, and then has it spooled. Um, she used to do it in a sort of a skein, and we're really much happier with the fact that she's gone to schools. It just makes it much easier to corral yeah. it. And they're kind of, uh, there's a few of them that are tone on tone, but a lot of them are pretty wild. There's mm -hmm. some pretty interesting ones in there. And then the other ones I wanted to grab and forgot to, right behind me is, um, this is Stars, which yeah. is from Gumnuts. Gumnuts is a Australian company. Yeah. I and like this, these. Yeah. And the yeah. thing I really like about their threads mm -hmm. is that they dye in families. Yes. So it is hand dyed. It's yeah. not solid. Yeah. You get a little color change, but it's tone on tone. Yeah. It's not It's not like um, Mardi Gras where you got purple, pink, and orange together. Mm -hmm. They're always tone on tone ones. Yeah. But if you're doing a project where... You need to shade something. You're doing something with um, Bargello, mm -hmm. um, and you want to be able to do flame stitch on mm -hmm. really fine count fabric. You can do that if you wanted to do a shaded one and have it be out of this because you mm -hmm. get some really lovely shades out of that. Mm -hmm. I think it's a really lovely yeah. thread to work with. Yeah. And then occasionally you'll come across threads that have silk as a part of it, but it's not silk. Mm -hmm. It's not all silk. So... Gilt Silk Twist, which I'm sure some people have heard of, this is um, a silk core, but it's wrapped with gold. Right. It's wrapped with a real metal. Right. This is not like a Verisoise metallic, and it's not like a Chronic metallic. Right. It's not a metallized thread. It's actual metal. Right. Um, it's fine enough that you can do, I do French knots with it, um, but you can actually do things where you want to shape it, and it will stay. So if you shape, if you do like lazy daisies with it, mm -hmm. they look lovely because you get that, you can get that perfect teardrop and they never move mm -hmm. because the metal keeps them from moving. Yeah. So it's a fun thread. It's an expensive thread because of the metal in it. Yeah. But it's a really, but it's a really fun thread to work with. Yeah. Um, so I was going to show just real quick some of the things I stitched. I'm going to give you pictures. Okay. So that, so that when you post this, there'll be pictures of it. This is... Uh, the one on the right is Floramel and um, uh, Swal actually, and some Swal 100. This is on 37 count. Can you just? Oh, that's that's good. We can see that very clearly. So the one, the big one, is um, Floramel and Swal 100. The little tiny part off to the side. Yes. That's got the little. That's got the the, the line and the the line across stitch and the satin stitch. Yeah. I took Trebizond the part. Right. So I took the the ones the the big thing of I took the Trebizond. Yeah. So I took this thread, and and then I literally took it apart, and it will come apart into three threads. And then, in theory, it can come apart from there, but I think if you try to take it apart from there, I think it might come apart. Yeah. Um, and because it's made from a filament silk, it makes the most gorgeous satin stitch because it flattens out just enough when you're doing the satin stitch. I, I have a hard time doing 
Um, satin stitch with something like Swa of All. Um, my cuticles tend to be fairly rough, yeah. and so it will grab the filaments. And inevitably, you know, I'm spending 90% of my time trying to stick it back in my needle. Yeah. So doing the trims on, because there's a slight twist to it, keeps that from happening. But you get this just really amazingly lovely satin stitch. So it's a fun one to play with. Yeah. For that, and this was on 37 count corn tassel, which is a really fabulous thread from um, Access. I mean, corn tassel is a wonderful lily. I love the color of it. I love the you know the yeah. feel of it. It's really fabulous, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna I'm gonna put my hand behind this. Um, this one you'll definitely need um, the, the 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 picture I sent that I did. Just up a little bit. This is. We can need you see that at all? The camera's not focused. Um, let me see if I can put, let me put it behind my piece of fabric and that might be easier. Mm -hmm. Okay, there we go. Oh yes, we're coming to, yeah. we're in focus. You probably won't be able to tell because it's so small, but this is 60 count silk gauze. So silk gauze um, is a really nice fabric to work with because if you have a hard time seeing 40 count linen, you can usually see 40 count silk gauze because the yeah. threads that are made up of it, the silk is really thin. Right. And because of that, you can see it a lot better. Yeah. Um, I've been trying to find something that I could do on the 60 count silk gauze. And this worked great because, I, so I did this with Swasserfine and it looked absolutely fabulous. Mm -hmm. It just came out really, really wonderfully. Um, and so that was kind of a fun one to do. And then this is 40 Camp Newcastle. Um, oh, actually, so the one on the, so this one is over one. So the one I did over two, and then this is one that's over one. And that's a full cross stitch. And But so that, and then one of the things I like to do with my threads, we talked about this, I think when, uh, oh, when we did the, the video at Jeans after, um, while we were on the lunch break at, at um, Ibithaya, I like to swatch my linens. Yes, it's and such a good idea. And not just count them to see what the count is, but I like to, to do them so I can see what the thread looks like. Yeah. And then I will actually write on this with a, with a pen. So I've done swasserfine. Uh, Swa 103 and Swa Dalje. And it helps me know that on a 5363, Swa is too thick. Right. It's just, it's gonna, it just looks too bulky. It makes nice big French knots, but if you're doing cross stitch, it's too thick. You want either Swa 100 or Swa Surfine, mm -hmm. and that's a personal preference because yes. some people like uh, more of the fabric visible underneath the stitches. They want that a little more open space, and some yes. people want it really, really plump. So that's one of the reasons that I will swatch my fabrics is because I can look at it and go, well, for this piece, I know I want Swa 100 because I want that denseness. I yeah. don't want that sort of open part to it. Yeah. And then I do. And then I've done that also with um, the Kingston as well. Um, that started out as a what count is this experiment. Yes. Um, yeah. And when I swatch them, I usually swatch with because I do embroidery as well. So I'll usually swatch um, with cross stitch. Um, over two, cross stitch over one, mm -hmm. um, stem stitch or a basting line, mm -hmm. and then French knots, um, lazy daisies, and I might do some kind of satin stitching because mm -hmm. I might want to put that in there. And then, like I said, I just literally write on the linen mm -hmm. what it is, mm -hmm. which Such is easier to do on a dense linen than a yeah. less dense linen. Yeah. And it gives a really nice um, way for me to be able to tell what it is I might want to stitch with. Yeah. I know you asked me a question uh, before we started the video about the Soie d'Alger and why was there a knot? Yes, a lady asked me that a few days ago, and um, I'm just interested in why you think there's a knot at the end of it. Well, I've actually seen the skeins made, so I know that answer. 
Um, I've been to visit Lamora at her warehouse. Yeah. And so I got to see the skeins being made. And the reason, the primary reason the knots in them is because the the equipment that they used to that they used to, to basically to wind it. Yeah. They put a knot in it because then they can stick that knot in a slot. Yes. Will hold it which holds the thread in place while they're winding it. Right. And they don't ever cut the knot off because then you know which end you need to pull from. Yeah. So I usually when I get a new skein, I figure out, you know, it's pretty easy to find the knot um, because it's unlike some threads. The the thing with the knot is it makes it really visible. Yeah. Um, So find the knot and then the right length to stitch with generally is pull it once, (laughs) although it does help if it doesn't get tied up. I always make sure to hang on to my um, my my labels so that I don't accidentally pull the whole thing apart. So yeah. I pull it once, and then I pull it twice. Twice, and yeah. that's about nineteen inches. Yeah. These are meters. These are five meter skeins. Yes, um, as opposed to yards. Yeah. Um, a meter is thirty nine point four inches. So you end up with just about nineteen inches for a half a meter. And that's about the length to stitch with. Yeah. I will stitch with something shorter if I'm working on a fabric that's really rough. Um, but generally, I tend to work about that length. Okay. I don't work longer than about 24 because yeah. by that point, just... I find that either the needles made an indentation yeah. or the thread has started to fuzz. Definitely. Um yeah. Another question that I've been asked quite a bit since um, I did the videos at the attic and we showed the hanks of Dalje that Jean had for Harris, oh, yes. is how do you catch your hanks and how do you store it? How would you catch your hanks and store them? I would actually, well, in fact, let me grab a hank. So hanks are are not tw- so the skeins are twisted like this, so that you can do a pull. You can't really do that with this because this is twisted a lot longer yeah. before it's twisted back on itself. So it's kind of a different thing. What I like to do with them, and in fact, I'm going to show you with the needlepoint ink skein because it will work the same way as a Swadelje Hank does. Right. Let me use my pretty little bow and red scissors. I think they're so this cute. sweet. <laughs> So when I get um, something like this, so if you look at this, even though different companies, the style is the same. You've got a big loop at one end. You've got two small loops at the other. In theory, you could cut through the loops, but I don't tend to do that. What I like to do is, so I'm going to find where the two loops are and separate them slightly. And then I'm going to stick my finger in the big loop. I'm only going to hang on to one of the small ones. And I'm going to pull it through. Right. And then if I do that, and then find where the knot is, because there's always a knot in it. When they're when they're twisted in big continuous things, there's always a knot that holds it all together. So I'm going to try and figure out where the center of this is, which sometimes takes longer than other times. Um, so just kind of fiddle it with your fingers pretend like you're trying to wind off a big thing of knitting yarn yeah um so i will find where the knot is and then i will tend to sort of twist the um twist it so that i can get it into a position that i can actually um cut the ends now what i did here was i accidentally pulled it far enough that it's almost going to come out right the way i fixed that is I'm going to retwist this a lot and push it back through it. Yeah. Because I like to keep the labels on my threads. I don't like to have to have them be something separate. Yeah. So I will cut where the knot is through both of them, and that gives me links about a meter long, and then I can cut it in half. Yeah. And the reason I do that is because then it lets me keep it, even though it's kind of loose and a little bit wobbly, it lets me keep it okay. with the label on it. And you can do that. You can do that with a hank of the Swadelje or the NPI as well. They're yeah. all kind of twisted the same. Mm-hmm. And some of the, most of the hand-dyed threads, the hand-dyed silks, actually come the same way. They're twisted. So I don't, so this is a skein of, of um, Gloriana 12-strand. Yeah. 
Um, we have it. We have it done like this so that we can actually hang them on the wall. Right. That's always the. That's always a problem in a in a retail store is that um, real estate for for where to display everything means you have to get creative about how you hang stuff. Yes. So if you get a skein and it's like this, which is typically how most people would get it, what I do is I cut through the knot that's at the bottom. And I actually cut through both layers of the knot. So there's, I want to cut all the way through it. So right. I'm going to, so that I want that knot completely off of it. Right. So it's now no longer attached. Mm -hmm. And now when I open it, now I can unfurl the whole thing. Right. Now, some people would take this and they would cut it at both ends. Yeah. Because you'd end up with about 18 inches. Right. And the reason I don't do that is a lot of times I like to manipulate the color. So this is, yeah. let me see if I can get back for yeah. if you can see it. Yeah. So this is one continuous loop. My, this finger is holding where the knot is. What I will do is I will cut, it, cut out the remaining knot, but just the knot. Yeah. And then as I work with it, I will spool off. Well, spool is sort of a term, even though it's not really on a spool. I will take this and I will kind of pull a bit of it off. And then I'll cut it where I want it. Right. So the reason that's important is, let me grab one of the colors that's really colorful. So let's say you've got a color like, let's say you've got a color like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where you've got five different colors in there. There's, well, and there's maybe more. There's yellow, green, sort of a peachy color, an orangey color, a pink, and aqua. Well, when you, if you just cut it at both ends, you can't really manipulate the color yeah. as you play with yeah. it. Yeah. So that's why I like to leave it in that continuous loop and then just cut off however much I need. Yeah. Because maybe I really only want that much of that particular color. Yeah. And I don't want I don't want the other 10 or 12 inches that I would get with it. Yeah. So I tend to kind of cut it differently depending on what the thread is just because I want to be able to manipulate it in a different yeah. way. Kathy, I wish I lived near a store like yours so I could come in, I could pull my threads, I can look at the threads, buy a couple, take them home and experiment. Is there anything that you can offer um, needle workers that can't come to the store that would like to have well, a taste? What we're going to do for this video, since we're kind of covering a smattering of things, is we're going to do um, two silk sampling packages. Right. Um, that will contain um, different threads and different fabrics. So right. one pack will have uh, Swawin 100 and Swasserfine, some dense count linens and the needles for it. And right. one of the little ultra fine needle threaders, because if you're using a number 10 beading needle, sometimes you need yeah. that. Yeah. Um, and then the other one's going to have um, Swa de Paris, Swa Goblins, and Swa d'Alger. Yes. Along with uh, 37 and 40 count linen, as mm -hmm. well as the the needle threader and the and the um, and the needles for it. Mm -hmm. And I I'll send you links. Yes. So that you can post that in the description. Okay. So yeah. And that way, people who maybe don't stitch with those threads, it'll be sort of a mishmash of colors of, of, of fabric, but there'll be things that go nicely together yes. so that they could either do a, a, you know, a one or two color motif. Um, they could do a single color motif. They could just do some sample stitching, yes. um, any of those kinds of things. I think um, that's and that's kind of a fun way to do it if you can't yeah. really be somewhere and go, well, I want to try Swago Blends, but I have no idea what to get. Yeah, that's wonderful. So uh, for people who are watching, if you look underneath the video um, and just click the drop down box, I will have the links for those um, taster packs. What are you calling them? We're going to we're calling them silk samplings. Silk samplings. That's great. That's wonderful. Yeah. 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 Now, and we ship all over the we ship all over the world. So it right. you don't have to be in the states. We we have customers in about in about sixty different countries. Yeah. I'm going to get up for just a sec because I need to plug my phone into power. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, we've had some very sad news in the UK today, Kathy. Our main store. Can you hear me, Kathy? Okay, I have to improvise now. <laughs> I'll be right back. I'm not. I haven't left you. I just okay. left the room. Okay. Um, Kathy, no, I realized after I when I when I that when I came into the 
came in here, I was supposed to bring my battery pack with me and I forgot to. Okay. Can you actually hear me at the moment, Kathy? Yeah, you can. Oh, yeah, I can hear you. We've had some very sad news today in the UK. The main um, needlework supply store, so and so, has closed its doors. Oh, no. Absolutely, yes. And, um, you know, we don't have many needlework stores in the UK at all. So it is a big loss for UK stitchers. So this video is even more important today for people who uh, live in the UK and need supplies to know that there are stores out there in other countries that have such a wonderful selection as you that will ship over to the UK. So, um, yeah, you know... Um, well, and I also always tell people who don't have a local store anymore, whether yeah. they're in the States or they're overseas, it's like find a store you can build a relationship with, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's us or Jean's people at the attic or Kim at Sassy Jack or mm -hmm. any number of other really great shops. Yeah. If you develop a relationship with those people, they're there for you when you go, I stitched this project. I really despise this color. Can you suggest something else? Yeah. Or, I really like the 46 count linen, but I can't see it well enough. You know, how, is there a way to improve that? Or yeah. is there another fabric I can try? Because, mm -hmm. you know, you can. we can still do full service. It just doesn't necessarily have to be in person. No. Um, I think a lot more people these days don't live in, don't even live within driving distance no. of a shop. The other thing is, like, for myself living in the UK, to actually pick up the telephone and to ring the States, it's very, very expensive. But I know yeah. that you're on Facebook Messenger. Um, people in the UK on Facebook can actually yeah. telephone you free of charge and, and have a conversation with you. They can have a video True. call. They could be True. holding yeah. things up. You could be holding items up as well. So, and we've done that with yeah, and we've done that with people too. Sometimes people will send us lists of things ahead of time, yeah, so that we can pull stuff together and then we can have that conversation. Okay, and yeah, I, I think it helps a lot. Technology has certainly improved access. Oh, absolutely. To yeah, to the kinds of things that we have that didn't exist, you know, twenty five or thirty yeah. years ago. Okay. Now. Yeah. In March of next year, I'm going to come over and visit you. So I'm going to. I'm so excited about that. I'm yeah. going to have. The was joy. I was excited to get your message that said you were coming. Yeah, my flight is all booked, um, and I can't wait to come into the store. And um, I'm going to bring a suitcase with me. <laughs> Oh, yeah, bring an empty one. I'm yeah. going to bring an empty suitcase <laughs> with me, and I'm going to stock up. Now, when I um, booked it, I didn't think about earthquakes. And uh, there's not that. Yeah. Well, you know, it's just kind of a thing we live with. Right. OK. I hope we're going to be OK. If there's an earthquake, you're going to have to hold my hand. Now, if there we is, can do that, if there is an earthquake and we, have we can to, even hug you if necessary. Okay. <laughs> If there's an earthquake and we have to go yeah, into actually, a... actually in earthquake country, the, the, the phrase to remember is duck and cover. Right. Okay. So when I, I grew up in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and when we grew, when we moved out to California in the sixties, that was the strangest thing when I moved here. It was like uh, in grade school, it was like, we'd have these earthquake drills and they teach you to dive under your desk okay. because you want something solid above you. So it's like, don't stand in a doorway, get under a desk. Yeah. Okay. Well, if there is an earthquake and I'm over there and we end up under a table for a couple of hours, what three items or gadgets that relate to needlework would you like to have with you? So uh, the first thing, and it's actually always with me, um, although sometimes it's harder to get it out of my pocket, um, is my pocket knife. Right. And I know that's kind of a... I know a lot of people think of that as more of a guy thing than a yeah. woman thing, but I've always my I've always carried a pocket knife. So I have a small one, right? Um, that's got a whole bunch of different tools on it, but it's got scissors, right? So right. I can cut threads. It's got um, it actually has a little tiny ruler. Yes. Um, it has a nail file. It has like three knives on it. Um, so I find it really useful because and it has screwdrivers. Right. I can't tell you the number of times I've been someplace, even in a hotel room. 
and it, something was loose and I pulled out my pocket knife and, and, you know, screwed something in because I didn't need to call maintenance. To okay. Do that. All right. So the other th thing would be, um, my halo, let me grab that. So this is the lamp I like to stitch oh, with. And this me. is a, and me. It's fabulous. I love and the I like it because it's an LED. It has um, it has a magnifier and it will fold completely flat. Mm -hmm. um, I did a review of it last year and we we sell a lot of them oh, because it's a I'm great. I'm not surprised. Lamp. It's one of the best purchases I've ever made. Okay. Yeah, it's a fabulous one. Yeah. And then the other thing I would have with me if we were going to be under there for more than a couple of hours, yeah, is my power pack. So this is, I happen to have one that's a, let's see, I think it's upside down. It's RAV Power is the company right. that I happen to have one from. Okay. Um, I like this one because, so my phone is plugged into it at the moment, but this particular one also has um, a three-prong plug. Right. So I can actually plug the daylight, the halo into it. In fact, yes. when I was at Jean's for the... For the Ibithia class, mm -hmm. that's what I did. I took that and, and used that. A lot of the seminars now in the States are um, not allowing people to bring lamps that plug in yes. because of a whole variety of concerns. So I think if I were stuck someplace where I wasn't sure if I was going to have good lighting to stitch with, yeah. having those two things, and, and I think I would need a, a, a solar charger. So that, you know, if I'm actually stuck stuck without power for three or four days, I can recharge my pack. <laughs> <laughs> when um, I was you at, never know. You, you know? never know. Do you? When I was at Nashville uh, this year, the first night we were there, there was a fire alarm. Um, and mm. Yes. Okay. The thing I took out with me from the room was my passport, my credit cards, and my roll of samples. <laughs> Yes, yes. I could see the passport, the credit card, and the and the things you'd been stitching on. I yes. could see you grabbing Lucy. Actually, I could see you grabbing Lucy before the passport and the credit card. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, Ray had the passport and the credit cards, if you really want to know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, dear. well, you know, because we've had a couple of earthquakes in the last couple of weeks, one about 40 miles from here, which was pretty mild, and then the one down in the L.A. area, you know, it 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 it, re, it revisits everybody with the earthquake preparedness kit. You know, whether no matter where you live in the world, yeah, um, there's always issues of weather in some form or fashion. For us, it's earthquakes. Um, although I I'll take that over hurricanes and tornadoes. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think everybody should have like a little preparedness thing, whether it's general keep you safe during some kind of you know event like that, or the what happens if I get stuck somewhere and I'm stuck on, you know, I'm the bridge is up and I'm stuck for three hours. I used to, I don't ha actually, I haven't in a long time when I comm commuted to work a lot, <coughs> excuse me. I used to keep um, a project bag in the back of the car. Yeah. Because I would never know if I was going to end up San Francisco area traffic can be a nightmare. And so I would never know if I might end up, behind some accident and stuck on the freeway with the car engine off for an hour. And so mm -hmm. I would always have some stitching with me. So if I needed to, if I needed to stitch, I could just sort of hang out behind the steering wheel and stitch. For a while. <laughs> there we are. Which is kind of a fun thing to do. Yeah. yeah. Do you know oh, but before we go, I wanted to show you a couple of models. So oh, lovely. Yep. this is, let's see, can you see it there? Yes, we can. Yep. So this is the Needles Praise English Whitework Sampler. Right. Needless to say, it's not white. No, well, white work doesn't have to <laughs> it's be It's my white. English teal sampler. Right. Um, and I'm using um, SWA 100 for this part, mm -hmm. and I'm using Swago Blends for this part. Mm -hmm. And I don't normally work in a frame. Right. Um, I usually work in hand, but I have to work in a frame when I'm doing satin stitch with Swago Blends because it being a filament silk, it's very wiry. You could kind of see that when I unspooled it, you know, mm -hmm. it kind of keeps that yeah. shape. Yeah. It Doing satin stitch, it wants to back the stitches out. And so I just find I have to do it with that. Yeah. But it's a lovely thread to work with. And I liked being able to get different texture on that sampler. That was kind of what I was after. Yeah. And then this one is, 
So this is um, the Drawn Threads and Open Heart. Uh -huh. It's from about, lovely. I think the chart's from about maybe like 18 years ago. Mm -hmm. It's fairly old. It's beautiful, Kathy. And this is entirely stitched with Swa 100. It's gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. So this was done on 34 count fabric. Even all of my satin stitches are done with Swa 100. So the entire border is two strands of Swa 100. The, the border that looks like it's hand dyed is in fact hand dyed. This is um, <laughs> Luminescence, right. which is Gloriana's um, hand dyed Swa 100. So I put a little of that in there. Well, but it was, you know, it took a little bit of effort to get the satin stitches to lay because I'm using two strands of a very round thread. Yeah. But I was just so happy with the way it looked when I was done with it. Oh, it well, just it looked really good. That's wonderful. a piece to be proud of. Do you know, we've been talking for over an hour. Oh, my uh, God. We so go. so we, we do need to go. But we'll have to come back because I would like you to talk to us about needles at some stage. Okay, we'll do that. Okay, so I'm off on my holly box, as we call it. <laughs> um, when I come back, uh, maybe we can fix up a date to um, record a Needlework Natters on needles. That'll be great, and we'll see each other, and I'll see you in person in about five, six, about five weeks, too. That's right, yes, I can't That'll wait. I'm so excited, so excited. Yeah. I could live in the States at the moment. <laughs> I'm doing well on my air miles. <laughs> yes, but you have such a lovely view and such great walks with Birdie Boots. So. I do, yes. <laughs> there we are. Anyway, thank you so much, Kathy. Until You're the welcome. next time. Bye, Z, bye. Okay, bye. Bye. -bye.